Okay, uh, thank you everyone for being patient. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Vic for nice introduction of myself and uh, Felipe, as well as uh, uh, Christy for arranging this uh, uh, seminar. And this the seminar is about intrahousal risk perception and uh, climate change adaptation in Sub-Saharan Africa. This is a uh, part of my PhD thesis and uh, it was co-authored by uh, Helen Hansen, who is a professor of uh, agriculture and food economics at the Swedish University of uh, Agriculture Sciences. Uh, my talk is organized into three parts. In the first part, I will briefly introduce the context and the motivation for this paper. And then I will go to description of the data and uh, the empirical approach we used in our data analysis. And then I will briefly present the main results and uh, some implications for policies and uh, uh, future research. Uh, a recent report by intergovernmental panel of uh, pollen on climate change indicate that Africa is one of the very vulnerable and worst hit continent by climate change. It shows that climate change has a negative impact on almost all sectors in Africa, unlike other regions where the net impact of uh, climate change on different sectors can be positive or negative, depending on the context and uh, uh, the, the part of uh, regions being considered. So to reduce this uh, risk and uh, build resilience of uh, human system, different countries in, in, in Africa have been aspiring to uh, adapt to climate change and uh, design different strategies to mitigate uh, the future climate change. And these uh, plans and the strategies in African context has been aspired by uh, different global uh, targets and goals of uh, climate change and uh, sustainable development uh, uh, goals. So these plans, for example, the, the, the Paris Agreement is one of the, the opportunities for African countries to harness the available uh, international and multilateral uh, arrangements to, to, to get some financing to build resilience of uh, different human system, different sectors to climate change, and also try to contribute to the global goal of keeping the average increase in, in, in global temperature below two degrees compared to the pre-industrial level. Uh, when we see the, the, the development plans, the national development plans in African context, most of plans, the economic plans, revolve around ending poverty or hunger and bringing the gender equality. These are part of the sustainable development goals and they are interrelated to each other because in African context, the, the, any strategy that can help to reduce poverty or end hunger can, can somewhere related with the climate action, the interventions, the governments uh, pursue to, to build resilience as well as uh, mitigate further uh, climate change in the, in the future. So uh, when we see the, the adaptation, climate change adaptation actions in Africa, the, the interventions implemented so far are mainly autonomous in the sense that those interventions are being implemented by the, the, the private uh, sector, the private individuals. This implies two, two things. The first one is that the, the systemic approach or the planned adaptation, which is driven by policy is very weak. And also it indicates some opportunities. For example, any strategy, any intervention that promotes individuals actions, for example, in, in, in adoption of uh, resilient agriculture can have important role in, in ending poverty 
and uh, uh, reducing the, the climatic uh, risks in the African context. Given this, there has been several studies focusing on individual actions and the strategies of climate change adaptation and mitigation in African context. And those studies highlight that the major challenge in promoting climate resilient economy in the context of Africa are the, the, the diverse risk perception of different decision makers and uh, limited adaptive capacity at individual as well as uh, national uh, levels. But the, the, the studies conducted in African context has considered the individuals, for example, the household, the farm households as uh, unitary entities. And usually they study the effects of household head behaviors on the household climate change adaptation decisions. And these studies mostly indicate that female male-headed households are more likely to adopt climate change adaptation uh, strategies compared to female-headed uh, households. However, this kind of analysis that considers the gender of household head in the decision of uh, climate change adaptation may not provide a complete picture about the decisions for climate resilient uh, technology adoption, or it may not show a complete picture about the women's role in agriculture. There are several reasons for this. One of the, the reasons is that there are intra-household diversities or heterogeneities in different uh, important aspects. One is that in, in some parts of Africa, particularly, there is a common tradition that a farm plot can be controlled by different members uh, of a family, of a, a, a given household. And there are also uh, earlier studies that indicate yield differentials between uh, plots, the farmlands managed by or owned by male or female members of a given household at a given uh, time. A recent studies also found that these yield differentials can be attributed to differences in the important aspects of uh, agriculture, for example, the, the quality of land uh, owned by male or female members of household, or partly these differences are attributed to the, the, the choice of technologies. For example, the, the decisions the, the owners or managers of farm fruits made. When we come to the context of uh, climate change risk and adaptation, we also see that there are differences in, in vulnerability to the risk of climate change or the perceptions about perceptions about climate risk within a given uh, household. Several studies indicate that female members of household are disproportionately affected by climate change as compared to the male members. This can be because of the, the reliance of females on some economic activities that are more vulnerable to uh, climatic change. But there are also another studies that shows that female members of households are more aware of climatic risks compared to the male members. And uh, in, in, in some developing, developing countries context that female, that the women in general are more pro-climate policy. They, they, they have behaviors that, that uh, are pro-climate policy interventions. But given this, the, the, the main question we can ask is that, what roles do behaviors of female spouse play in households climate change adaptation decision? Well, given the, the existing studies, the answer to this question is not clear. This is because the, the analysis that investigate the drivers or the barriers of climate change adaptation in African context are considering the, the 
gender of household heads with no attention to other members of the household that can influence the decision. So the limitedness of the intra-household analysis uh, leads us to uh, not having clear uh, understanding of how the behaviors of female spouses affect household decision in, in, in choosing the climate resilient farming practices. So given this background. It's a guy, uh, Sandeep has a, a question. He's got his hand up. Okay. So guy, just a clarification question on the last line and, and what you said. When you, when you see that they have different awareness of climate than their husbands, let's say, or male and female members, um, are, you, are you thinking of this as differences in preferences or differences in information sets? I would say in the, it is both. These both. differences can be driven by differences in the information, as well as uh, differences in, in, in behaviors, including the, the preferences. Um, not the behaviors. I'm saying that the, there are differences in preferences and possibly differences in information, which could drive behavior in some way. Is that, is that what you mean? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. thank you. Some, some aspect of behaviors are also driven by the, the information we have and the experiences as well as the exposure. So not behavior in, in, in innate uh, uh, like perspective, but the exposures and the, the access to information can affect people's uh, perceptions about the, the risks as well as yeah. the... Uh, I, I was just tying it back to the literature that you know, there is this idea that women care more, let's say, there's a lot of evidence that women care more about investments and savings than their male counterparts, right? That is a difference in preference, right? So the behavior that, that is triggered by that preference is that they actually save more, right? Um, it, it, so yours could be that they prefer, they have more climate friendly preferences. That's one channel or they just could have simply have for the same preferences with their, with their spouses, they could have more information, two different channels, right? Uh, yes, but in our data, we see that women have less information compared to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. whichever, yeah. different, yeah. different information. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, you, you are right, yeah. The, these, the difference in preferences can be driven by difference in behaviors and those behaviors are something that can we attribute to the different factors, including the perceptions or the experience they have related with these uh, climatic risks. Thank you. It's a good point, thank you. So given this background, we, we study how the perceptions of spouses risk perception about climate change affect the decision of uh, households to adopt climate change adaptation strategies. And we also examined how these perceptions, risk perceptions affect female spouses' participation in household uh, decision for climate change adaptation. We also observed some gap in adaptation in our data. So we investigate what factors drive this gap in adaptation between spouses within a, in a given uh, household. So when we come to the data, our paper uses intra-household data collected from uh, Kenya and Uganda, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, sorry. This data was collected by the, the research program on climate change, agriculture, and food security of the consultative group of uh, uh, agriculture research. Basically, this, the, they, they select 400 households from Kenya, 200 households from Uganda and 200 households from Senegal. And they interviewed both male and female, female spouses in a given uh, household independently about their perceptions about the risks of climate change, their uh, farming experiences and the practices, and also adoption of uh, climate resilient technologies in their farming activity. Uh, we also combine this uh, intra-household data with the uh, rainfall and temperature data at the village level. 
we extract this village level rainfall and temperature from the world claim. And this data is provided by a climate center uh, of the University of East Anguilla. In our data, we don't have uh, this, the, the geographic or spatial information in, in, in the survey, but we use data, the global database for uh, global administrative areas, GAD. And so we match the village with the, the, the administrative areas map of the respective village and drive uh, generate the rainfall and the temperature data from the uh, given uh, maps. Then uh, our main variable, for example, the adoption of climate change adaptation is, is defined as a demi variable that takes one if a given spouse made any change to, to adapt to the climate change in their uh, farming. But to, to capture the interdependence and uh, complementarity of different strategies in a given uh, sector or given subsector in agriculture, we grouped those strategies that reported by the spouses into three main categories, the crop-based strategies, soil and water conservation strategies, and the livestock-based strategies. And in our analysis, we consider both the, the, the total ado ad adoption, which, which was the, the demi variable constructed from a question that uh, respondents reply about the, the changes they made in their farming to adapt to the climate change. And also a group we created based on the nature of uh, strategies. And the second, main variable in our analysis is the, the female's participation in, in final decision of those uh, adaptation strategies. The, the, the survey question about was, uh, this was that the respondents were asked who made the final decision to adopt to that uh, specific strategy in their uh, family. So this, the female participation uh, variable is defined as a demi variable that takes one if a female spouse made a final decision independently or jointly with their male spouses to adopt to climate change. Finally, we defined the gender gap adaptation variable as a multinomial variable where uh, if both spouses report adoption, then there is no gap in adaptation. But if males adapt, but females do not, we capture that as gap one. And uh, the other is that when females adapt, but males do not. So our interest here is that what drivers, what factors can affect the, this, the, 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 the second option, the option where the case where males do adopt some strategies to adopt to climate change, while females do not. Mohammed, you raised uh, your hand, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I have a question. Just, I'm not understanding the context. How are you defining planting dates as a CCA strategy? Can you tell me about the context that you are using this for? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for example, if in Africa, the, the agriculture is mainly rain fed. So the, the day they plant their crops depends on when rains come, right? So if there is a climatic change, for example, if there is a drought or if there is uh, unsuitable conditions, they don't plant their uh, crops during the, like the conventional calendar time for uh, crop planting. So they wait until the rain comes so changing the planting date is also considered as one of the coping uh, strategies to climate change. Okay, thank you so much. So Gary, I have a quick, very quick question. Okay. So I, maybe I missed it. So when, so here you are talking about uh, male and females who work Whose plot are, is this? Is this the is the plot owned by both of them? You do are 
you tell me about that a little bit please yes uh, the these plots are either owned by male uh, spouses in, like independently or female uh, spouses but also we have a case where the ownership can goes to the both spouses but one uh, spouse particularly manage certain plot of land so there is kind of uh, differences in ownership as well as the management as well so this and for the, example yeah go ahead the female you go oh sorry uh, so let's say gender gap uh, male uh, males adapt females do not then let's say the last line uh, is it on plots that could be owned by men owned by uh, owned by husband owned by wife or both or is that for female plots can you tell me that is yeah yeah this is like is this uh, for all plots no not for all plot each each member of the uh, each spouse were asked about the plot they either manage or own oh, so okay, they are okay. they are reporting about the the plots okay. under their management and ownership did you define it in some way that they have the papers to the land or how did you how did the survey define ownership uh the ownership is basically defined in terms of uh like who has the certificate of uh the ownership for that plot of land or who has uh, inherited that land from their uh, parents because the in inheritance is one of the important ways people uh, acquire land so perfect so, uh, you you answered my question thank you yep. thank you it's a good point so then when we move to our the main variable of interest which is uh, spouses risk perception uh, we define this as an, an an a variable where we capture each spouse's belief about the the likelihood of uh, climate event or climate change happening in the future or the the expected damage of each uh, climate event so first we multiply the likelihood of the climate change or climate event occurrence with the the magnitude of expected damage that each uh, is possible report and then to get the overall composite index we use the principal component analysis to 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 develop to construct a single uh, variable of climate risk perception our assumption here is that each of these climate uh, events or climate change uh, situations are independent so we use a formative uh, latent construct to develop index of climate risk perception and then we develop we construct rainfall and temperature shocks as a mean deviation from the uh, the historical average so basically we consider the 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 rainfall and temperature during the data collection uh, periods and i will explain this when i uh, talk about our identification strategy so we generate we extract data at village level and construct rainfall and temperature shocks as a mean deviation from the historical average then our data shows that there is a difference statistically significant difference between uh, female and male spouses in terms of uh, how do they perceive climatic risks interestingly female spouses are found to have uh, more concerns about uh, climate change uh, risks and when we see the adaptation we see that male uh, spouses are likely to adapt uh, climate change uh, adaptation compared to the female ones but these differences are driven mainly by the soil and the water conservation uh, strategies instead of uh, crop based or livestock based strategies and we also find differences in, in land ownership and uh, access to uh, information where male spouses have 
have have uh, they own more land and have more access to uh, climate information compared to female uh, counterparts. Hello, Vic. Just a quick question to, to guy: the climate risk perception is that a kind of uh, rating scale or something, or is it a, a, prob a probability of some kind that's scaled? Uh, it's a kind of rating scale. The exposure were asked how likely they think the climate change will uh, happen. So there is like the, the, the options were more likely, less likely, but they were asked to put on a scale from uh, one to five, five being more likely and zero is not likely. Okay, or 10, because the means were like seven and six or something like that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. scale. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, that's the data. When we come to the our empirical uh, part, we adopt a collective household model uh, framework where we assume that both spaces, both uh, spaces involving cooperative household decision making and uh, only male and female spouse are the main uh, decision makers. So we are assuming that a grown up children or some people or the relatives who are living with them have no uh, influence on household's uh, decision. So in our framework, we assume that households maximize the, the weighted average of uh, female spouse and male spouse uh, utilities. So the spouses choose adaptation decision, climate adaptation decision that maximizes the, the, the weighted average of uh, both spouses uh, utilities. This is unlike the, the unitary household model where a single individual's utility determines the, the household's uh, uh, decisions. In this case, this, uh, this parameter uh, represents the, the female's participation in household uh, decision making. So it captures female's uh, influence in, in climate change adaptation uh, decision. So from this framework, we can specify three uh, reduced form models. The first one is being the, the, the adaptation decision, estimating adaptation decision for each of his poses, where each of his poses maximize their utilities, of course, taking the, the utility of other member into consideration. The second one is that we also estimate the factors, the Z, component, the factors that affect females' participation or females' influence in climate change adaptation decision. Then uh, based on the, the framework, empirical framework, we estimate three models, six different models. The first one being the decision to adapt to climate change and adaptation in this sense is as I mentioned earlier, captures three aspects. The first one is the overall ad adoption of any uh, strategies to uh, adapt to climate change or adopting strategies specific to crop sector, livestock sector, or soil and water conservation part. And the second model is about females participation in decision. And the third one is uh, adaptation gap where we define the difference between uh, male and female responses about the questions uh, related with the, the strategies they implement to adapt to climate change. So in, in our uh, three models, this the risk perception variables are main variable of interest. But the problem here is that risk perception variable is endogenous. This is because people often underestimate or overestimate the probabilities of uh, climate change happening or the expected uh, damage associated with climate change. So we suspect that there can be measurement error because these probabilities are self-reported and the subjective perceptions. 
and there can also be an observable factors about the the ability or the characteristics of each species. So uh, there is endogeneity problem in our uh, model, and to solve this problem, to address sorry, this can problem, I ask something quickly? Yes. Hi, uh, sorry, Sergey. Uh, looking at your data table earlier, I noticed that it seems like males have a lot more decisions that they make they do. versus yeah. females. So yes. I guess I have two questions related to that. Uh, can you just briefly tell us why they have twice as many household decisions? And then the second question is related to uh, the, the adaptation strategies. Mm -hmm. Are females constrained in terms of the number of decisions they can make? And so do they have to be strategic in terms of what they decide to do? Because, and I'm just making stuff up right now, they know that they can only say or make decisions for like 10 things. So they have to really prioritize those 10 things. Whereas males know they can make, what is it, 130 decisions. So they just do whatever. And if that's the case, is there a way to sort of weight the adapt the adoption of CCA strategies as a function of total decisions made? Because then that makes the women's number a lot bigger. Uh, yes, that, that that's true. The problem here is that we don't have like data or information regarding that kind of restrictions. For example, if they are not allowed to make certain decisions or if they are allowed only to make some aspect of the farming. But there are evidences in another context where there are kind of customary uh, division of labor within a household. Males do certain tasks, whereas females do other certain tasks. But in our, in our uh, data, the question is that they, 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 each of the spouses are asked to list the number of each of the decisions they were involved with. So there is no constraint in, or there is no way to know how those decisions made or how much total decisions they were allowed to uh, make. It was just both spouses were asked to list, for example, 10 or five most important decisions they were involved in in the, in the household. So it, it's important uh, observation for uh, like for future data collections, but there is no information in our data to know about those kind of uh, like factors driving these uh, differences in the, in terms of number of uh, decisions they make. Okay, thank you. Good. It's good discussion. Yeah, yeah I, I have another question related to the data piece. Can you go back to the table? Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, how is access to weather information is defined? Like, does do they have any radio or television, something like that? Uh, in in sense, yes, but the question is that if they do have, like, if they have access to for example, short-term weather, uh, like variation about short-term weather or long-term climatic changes. So it's, it's like a yes or no question. They're not defined or we don't have information about if they have, uh, for example, infrastructures, as you mentioned, radio, television, to listen to about the uh, climate change information. Right, uh, but you have information on asset own, so asset, I assume that they must have, you know, in survey data, the asset always include radio, television, et cetera, right? Yes, unfortunately in our data, this asset includes only the productive uh, assets, the okay. asset they use for farming. Right, thank you, okay. But as, as you mentioned in, in conventional surveys, it's, it's uh, common to list all of the assets households own, but in this particular survey, they only, ask it respondents to list the productive asset that's it they use for uh, farming purposes. Yeah, 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 that can happen too. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, to address the endogeneity problem, we use instrumental var variables approach. 
to estimate our uh, models. Uh, as I mentioned, we used the exogenous shock in temperature and rainfall during the data collection in Manzis as, a, as an instrument to, to control for the endogeneity uh, problem. But the concern related with using this kind of instrument is that the contemporaneous shock, the shock in this month may not be independent from previous years or previous months' uh, shocks. So to, to address that potential concern, we control for the self-reported, responded self-reported uh, shocks during the past five years prior to data collection. And we do also the, our, for example, in this equation, the way we construct uh, the shock helps us to net out the, the, the past trend because we are uh, demeaning uh, the rainfall and temperature variables using the historical average. So this helps us to net out past trends as well as extreme uh, weather events. So this helps us to, uh, to net out the, the past trend, which means that uh, in our context, the contemporaneous shock in rainfall and temperature are not correlated with the past uh, decisions to adapt to climate change. So under these uh, identifying assumptions, we uh, claim that uh, our approach satisfies the exclusion restriction and we manage to distangle the, the effect of past shock on shaping the perceptions of uh, climate risk. Uh, when we see the, the first stage uh, regressions, our results shows that the, the rainfall shock as well as the rainfall shock interacted with temperature shock are uh, related with, correlated with the uh, supposed perception of climate change. And uh, the, the effectiveness of uh, robust standard errors, which is greater than uh, which are greater than 10 in our all of its specifications indicate that we can use these instruments and our instruments are strong enough to uh, mitigate the bears from the weak instruments. When we see the, the main results, our result indicates what is, that... What is yes, the dependent variable which you're instrumenting? It's uh, the climate risk perception. In our context, this the climate risk perception variables are endogenous, and we are instrumenting these uh, endogenous variables with rainfall and temperature shock. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. And just to follow up on Sandeep's question, so but the climate risk perception is is that's the composite of the of the perception and the damage and those pieces, right? So it's it's the combined variable that's being instrumented. Yes, yes, it's an index comprising the 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 perceived likelihood and perceived impacts of those uh, specific events. For example, the, the drought rain variability and heat wave. So it's, it's a composite variable, an index we construct uh, using uh, information on, on those uh, uh, variables. Thanks. Yeah. So, I have, yes. Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, I'm just wondering why are you not separately uh, instrumenting the, the temp temperature variable, temperature shock? Why are you just interacting with uh, rainfall shock? We do in, in our uh, initial analysis, we use rainfall and temperature shock separately, but there are arguments that like in some, in, in some uh, contexts, this the, it's not only rainfall or temperature that, that separately matters, but also the interaction between the two. 
So in that regard, we try to use three instruments, the rainfall shock, temperature shock, and the, the uh, interaction between the two. But the temperature shock by itself happened to be, uh, happened to have statistical insignificant uh, relationship with the risk perception in our first stage regressions. So we dropped that variable in, in, from the final analysis. Okay, thank you so much. So again, my connection uh, dropped. So I was just asking that regression where you have the instrument, uh, rainfall as an instrument for perceptions, what is the dependent variable? Is it actions? In the, I'm now talking about the first stage. So in our first stage, the dependent no, variable- no, Not the instrument, the main, main equation, where, which has an endogeneity, the main equation, there the dependent variable is adaptation. Yes. So how are you ruling out the connection between a rainfall shocks, your instrument, and your dependent variable? It's a great question. Yes. Here, I was explaining about the, uh, our identifying, ident identifying assumptions. The, the first thing is that we control the, the subjective uh, shocks, the shocks reported by respondents. And also we try to uh, like net out the past uh, shocks, the past the temperature. So the, like the mechanism that these shocks can affect adaptation is through affecting uh, risk perception. And this adaptation information is uh, the information captured or implemented during the past cropping season, like the, the cropping season prior to the data collection months. So if we capture the, the past climate shock that can affect the past perceptions and that past per per perceptions affect the, the past adaptation. So this, the, the, the rainfall shock can only affect the future adaptation through affecting the, the, the perception, not as directly affecting the adaptation. Okay, is there any possibility that, you, you know, without thinking about the past, the, the rainfall shocks that you're looking at can directly affect ad adaptation through some other channel? Yes, yes, there is, there is, of course. Like perceptions are not something that can be developed like just for like over time. So someone can have similar perceptions for a long time about climate change. So these, the, the, their perception about any climatic event might have uh, some relationship with the, 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 the adaptation actions they adopted. But in our assumption that we are netting out the past trends of uh, rainfall and temperature, and we are also controlling the, the subjective uh, information about the climate shock. So okay, okay, okay. So with that, that assumption, you are identifying. Okay, great. Yes, Thank you. yes. It's good. It's good point. So the, our main result indicate that both males and females' risk perception affect. The, the likelihood of uh, adopting climate change adaptation and the effect is positive. But when we see each of the, the, the for example, the crop-based soil and water or livestock-based strategies uh, separately, we only found positive and uh, statistical significant impact of risk perception on uh, crop uh, soil and the water-based uh, strategies, which means that these effects are being driven by soil and uh, water conservation uh, uh, sector instead of the crop-based or livestock-based uh, strategies. When we see the, the effect of risk perception on female sports participation in climate change adaptation decision, we find that the perceptions affect females participation. So in this case, uh, we estimate this the participation of female spouses as reported by females and as reported by males separately. This is because 
in our data, we find some difference between the female's influence of adaptation decision reported by female and uh, uh, male. There are also some literature supporting these uh, differences. Males usually underestimate females' role in agriculture in African and other uh, developing contexts. When we see the uh, gap, gender gap in, in adaptation, we see that it's not the, the climate risk perception difference that is driving difference in uh, climate change adaptation between female and uh, male spouses, but rather we find that the, the difference or the gap in land ownership or for example, access to information, access to weather information or access to uh, extension services are main factors behind the, the observed gap between male and female spouses adoption of uh, different strategies to, to build resilience of their farming activities. This has important uh, implications for policies and uh, 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 different implications for uh, uh, research. So to see if our results carry on, if we uh, rather adopt a different empirical uh, approach, we check the, the robustness. For the robustness check, we implement two main uh, approach. In the first case, we defined adaptation at household level. Hello, Vic. Sorry, just one quick question. I, I noticed that the number of observations has really dropped. Is this because people didn't report the information for the ad adoption gaps, especially in the, you know, you're down from 600 to 400 or so? Yes, yeah. Uh, this, then the first case, we are defining adoption in, in general context. The, like uh, we are defining household as adopter if or uh, if any of the spouses implement any of uh, ad, any of the strategies it could be crop based or livestock based or soil and water conservation but in this case we are only considering soil and water conservation uh, activities right so, so we'll that, that's, that's yeah. yeah that's okay. a difference where this uh, difference in uh, number of observations are coming. We are only considering soil, soil, and, deep, uh, soil and water conservation because in our uh, descriptive statics, we found that the difference between spouses was not statistically significant uh, when we consider livestock based and uh, crop based strategies uh, in this case. So we only consider these two strategies where we find statistically significant difference between two spouses. Great, thanks. Yes, for the robustness, we, uh, we implemented two main uh, alternative approaches. The first one is defining climate adaptation decision at household level. This is in line with the, the conventional unitary household model. And the second uh, alternative approach was instead of including country dummy variables, what happens if we estimate separate equation for separate countries? These are two uh, alternative approaches we tried, but we also uh, changed the way we define instrument. For example, if we take instead of 10 years uh, average for past uh, climate trend, what will happen if we take, for example, 30 years average or 20 years average? Our results show that the, the main uh, finding we got doesn't change uh, if we change the, the, the approach we uh, implement. So here, if we define the adoption decision at household level, we find that female spouse's perception of climate risk has positive impact on the general adoption, the general uh, adoption of general cultural uh, resilient mechanisms and uh, soil and water conservation. And also, we also have similar uh, 
result for the female spouse's participation. When we uh, consider each country's uh, sample separately, unfortunately, we find uh, statistical insignificant or the inconsistent sign in case of uh, Uganda and Senegal. But the results for Kenya are consistent with the, the main result we got. The possible explanation, one of the possible explanations for this is that when we do estimation for each of the countries, we unfortunately got very small uh, sample size in, in, in case of these uh, two countries. But when we see, for example, all the sample instead of uh, excluding where there is only one uh, respondent in, in, a, in a household, we see the consistency of our, our uh, results in Uganda and Senegal as well. One thing I forgot was uh, that in our main analysis, we drop the case where only one uh, spouse is interviewed from a given uh, household. This was to ensure the comparability of the the, the results. Uh, then before I end, I, I want to say some points about the implications for policy and future research. One of the implications was that the gender differentiated preferences and the behaviors are important factors in uh, decisions for adoption of uh, climate resilient uh, farming practices. And uh, we also, uh, find that it's important to generate large uh, data, large sample size data about the gender dis disaggregated uh, information from households as well as the grown up uh, children. In Africa, the way farms organized is, is, is that all members of the family, for example, the grown up children, and uh, all spouses can have some influence in farming uh, decisions. So only considering the gender of household head may not provide a uh, complete picture about the uh, decisions and the climate change adaptation in African context. And one of the important implications for the future research is that does this adoption of climate smart agriculture benefiting the, the vulnerable group, for example, what relationship it has for, for the, uh, the welfare of, for example, women, children, or low-income uh, farmers in the context of uh, Africa. This is uh, the presentation I have for today. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate your comments and uh, feedback. Thank you, Tege. Is there more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So in the survey data, so did you did your data? I mean, did your survey ex, uh, ask question to all the uh, children and also the male and female head? Or, I mean, the male and female of the household. I mean, including all the children. No, it's uh, only the 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 spouse, both and male husband. and female spouse. Yes. Uh, but you said that, uh, like you know, the behavior of only household head does not uh, provide a complete picture. So, probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it might be that the grown-up children are part of the uh, livestock strategy or or crop-based strategy. You know that they might be taking the task themselves so yeah I, I know it's a shortcoming of the data so uh, yes but in african context uh, the household heads are usually males if if there are two like female and male uh, spouses living together it's a male that's considered as a head of the household so there is no dual kind of uh, headship so but, if I, when I'm saying the, the like the behavior of household aid, I'm I'm saying that the behavior of uh, like the male spouse in household. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Any other questions? No? Hey, thank you, Tsege. That was a nice presentation. And um, so um, this is essentially the end anyway. No, no more question, sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It, it was really interesting and uh, a good discussion yeah. throughout the presentation. So I'm, I'm really grateful for all of the participants. Thank you, see you next week uh, for uh, Sandit Seminar. It will be in person, okay, in our department. Okay, Thank bye. You. Thank you very much. Bye. bye. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks, Sky. Yeah, you bye. too. Bye.